some of the training techniques with weapons, uh, what are some of the basic weapons that you start people off with? Well, what I, what I try to do is, uh, and, and not try to, to sound too philosophical or too, or too exotic, whatever, you know, we, we don't want to, get, want to get away from that. The basic weapons that I teach, you know, any student is the use of uh, his body and his empty hands first. But going beyond that, you know, uh, teach, you teach God to use his mind because use his mind properly and it's coordinated and the body, the body follows suit. If the body follows suit, the hands work uh, in a coordinated fashion and the weapons become an extension of what you can do with your hands. So some, the, the hands is basically uh, the, that physical thing that I teach, you know, the physical weapon, the basic physical weapon that I teach. And then from there we go into stick weapons, uh, various uh, lengths and categories of stick weapons. They're called stick weapons because they're made out of wood. Then we go into, uh, we go into non-bladed uh, knives or swords. Non-bladed knives or swords are those weapons that are made out of metal or steel that you strike with and can actually cut or fracture, but they don't slice into the body. Then we go into the bladed weapons like the knives and the swords, and then we go into the missile type weapons, which are throwing the stars and, and the knives and, and like, you know, like some of what I did today, the blow guns and all of that. And, uh, and from there we go on to, uh, and all of these weapons then are broken down into subdivisions. Then you branch out. From a long sword you use a dagger, you know, from a long stick you use a short stick, and you go on and on and on. And as a student progresses, it becomes a natural part of everybody here. Then they, they can pick up any particular weapon that I put in their hands, you know, within reason. And they can use it effectively. So, uh, no idea is, you know, using, using this. Has ninjutsu evolved through the years? Definitely, ninjutsu evolved. Actually, you know, there was a time when, when the art form that we, that we call ninjutsu, because you've got to bear in mind that ninjutsu is a Japanese term. I, I don't know exactly what these principles were called, say, in Egypt or in, in, in Africa or, or in Greece or in, or in Germany or in Spain or during the time of the Moors or in China or in India. But I know uh, it, 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 it evolved. Oh, we can trace it. In fact, it, ha it has been traced, as I said before, you know, what exists today is largely dependent uh, uh, on, the, uh, on the interchange of cultures, uh, what cultures and what, what culture borrows from another culture. As no culture or people on this planet are totally independent from external influences from somebody else. Okay? And ninjutsu has been traced thousands of years before Japan became a culture within itself. And it goes beyond. It goes beyond the earliest dynasties of China. Okay, it has been traced as far back as a village in India called Kerala, K-E-R-A-L-A. Because in Kerala, in Kerala, I forgot what 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 part of the coast of India turned. Kerala is a village where many of the warlike people of that society emerged. And uh, and uh, ironically, these forms and the practice very much in India. And then, and, and then before, you know, before uh, 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 Kerala we go, because we've got to find the Dravidians going to Dravidia. And those people were Dravidians and practice warlike techniques. And then we go beyond that. You know, why once in an article I said if we go back to the bones of civilization, we'll find those elements that actually built what is today's society. And we have to go as far back as we can, you know, to, to recognize and understand what what, what people studied astrology and studied the natural herbs around them and studied deception. If, if we read the, uh, the, the, the Bible, you know, there are two professions which are considered the longest known to man. That's prostitution and espionage. So since ninjutsu is so strongly connected uh, with espionage, we have to, we, we, we can't really uh, see how it evolved, but I know how it, be, how it developed into a very vital force in changing the history of of, of countries, especially Japan, over an 800 year period when Japan was in turmoil, when political turmoil existed, and people that were itinerant, nobodies, just everyday, I don't want to say nobodies, I, I want to apologize for that, people that were not even warlike, but people who did not necessarily adhere to the, the norms of the time or the, uh, the oppression, oppressiveness of the regimented type of society of Japan, these were people that 
will say, well, we will do our own type of, of free thinking and explore those areas where others will not dare to explore because of their rigid mentality. And, 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 and gaining these vantage, vantage points, you know, these advantages, these people, when, 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 when the moment, it is said that, that heroes and great people rise at a certain time in history. You know, nobody has to tell them when. They utilize all the resources that they had, that they had put together over the years, and from those particular families of people, very insignificant farmers and, 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 and priests and, and pe people of the theater, very, very, very peace-loving people, emerge what we know today as a ninja. So they became that out of, out of necessity to survive. Uh, so, of course, uh, they, uh, ninjutsu at, at its best is, is very curative. It's, it's a marvelous thing at its worst. It's, it's, uh, it's like looking into the gate.